Hey, welcome to another episode of Roll or Die. Uh, I don't know how it's taken us this long to bring this gentleman onto this show because he is uh, one of the OGs of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here in Melbourne and all over Australia. Uh, what rank are you, Carlos? What, what degree? All right, I appreciate you guys for the invite myself. Um, Carlos Vieira, I'm the head coach of the Sia Paulista. I'm a 50 yeah. degree black belt. Fifth degree. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. actually. I think next year, next year the we after I complete forget the sixth stripe. Yeah, you yeah. might be our highest rank that we've had on. Uh, I think Marcelino yeah. Freitas might be similar. Uh, yeah. I think I'm probably Maybe. older than him, one or two years older than him as a black belt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah, thank and you the age very much, and the belt. Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you feel about jujitsu, yeah. man? At this time, like you, you're so you've been around, you know, immersing yourself in it for so long. Do you feel like there's how much more is in the, is this journey forever a forever journey? Is it like, or do you feel like you just fully understand it and there's nothing more to learn? How do you feel about jujitsu? Nah, it's actually, it's actually, it's I can see every year that just update everything in jiu-jitsu mm. i'm actually glad to have the guys been coming back and forth from brazil and training with me and the ones actually stay they've been just uh, update everything in the gym as well because if it was just by myself sitting down and waiting for something or just believe my jiu-jitsu hell was that's supposed to be way back these days because mm -hmm. they look like they never stop and mm -hmm. i believe they're gonna be like this for very long awesome yeah yeah so tell us about how how you got started in jiu-jitsu. Like when was it? And yep. Yeah. How how it all happened. <laughs> I, I come from I I born in São Paulo, but then I raised myself and raised in in Minas Gerais. It's a small city, very small city in the, in the south in Minas Gerais. I was around the, back in the day like thirty seven thousand people on the city, and I was at the school. And I was used to do some weights at the school and some of my friends that was doing jiu-jitsu and I always keep coming like, man, you want to come and train? I say like, nah, this is not for me. It's this hug each other is not for me. <laughs> and I think that's the most of the people that think they're first impressed. And they yeah. took me one day and I thought it was a bit strong. And then he just used myself as a dumb from here, from a day. It was like, oh, I think he's having more than this, the hug. And I started to come back one day and the second day and they just hook up and it never ends. And I started around, it was a 13 and a half to 14 years old. Mm. Wow. Back then. Wow. Were you training with kids? Yeah. Or were you training with adults and kids? Like I, I find that back then. You know, no, well, yeah. yeah. back then it was like not many. It was everything's all mixed. The higher rank you have in the club was only a blue belt and wow. the coach, the two coaches was a black belt. That's all we had. Mm. And it what was you... very it, it was very hard because you don't have like a, someone to push yourself as or uh, as a goal or as a higher level. And everyone's just know the same movements and they just push each other every day to get better. It was very hard, a lot of injuries and a lot of fights. But it was mm. good back then. Can't complain. Yeah. What year was this? Sorry, when was this cover? I started when I was 13 and a half to 14. I was around the 90s, 991, 92, something like that, 90s. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So just as yeah. the UFC was before the UFC? Before the UFC. And then when you're watching the first the first UFCs, it was like a, amazing. And that was actually pumping the whole city to start actually doing more the sports as well, mm. like usual. What's it yeah. like? Like with those, with those, I'm fascinated. Like the like, I happen to know of a young guy at the moment. I won't mention him, but um, he he he's only about fourteen, fifteen, and he's just gotten a serious elbow injury that needs surgery, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, like with those injuries that you that you saw when you were younger, were there any like like career-ending injuries? Like this this is, I guess, something which I'm focused on right now in 
kind of kids jujitsu is like it's getting more and more yeah. the skill levels are getting higher these kids are really going for it nowadays do you have any views about like kid injuries well it's it's like you said actually back in the day when i was training as well it's exactly like that it was like a not much control with that the older kids that push themselves hard they train with adults you know what i mean there was that can happen but for myself now these days, especially because I'm I'm a father, I have five kids, and mm. all my kids started jiu jitsu when I was three years old. All my kids are in the mat already. My mm. older ones are 12, or he has 13 a couple of days ago, and my youngest five. And everyone, every single one's in the mat. And in my club in Maribyrnong, I was basically with the project we have the kids, we have over 160, over 170 kids. And my goal is not just about to be the big champion, but a lifestyle uh, to make sure we give like the future, a better future for the kids. Not like a better future in uh, aspect like back in the day in Brazil, but in a confident uh, at the school, the bullying, all the kind of stuff we actually live in these days. But mm -hmm. like I said, I think the priority is to make sure everyone don't get hurt, don't get injury. I uh, have my kids on the mat every day or basically three, four times a week. And I never push my kids to be like the best, but for the time they've been training, they're gonna be one day they're gonna be good anyway. It's it's the process. Mm -hmm. But the idea to make sure my kids understand the 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 process of the jiu-jitsu, the friend, the relationship, uh, to be in the school as the confident one day if something happened, this is the main goal. But in these days, we still see the last competition, we have the second place, the third place as the general of the kids. Still doing good because, like I say, it's all about time. But the goals it should be like give the kids the best mm. for the kids, for the health and the future, the health. Yeah, love it, man. Thank you. Yeah. Oh no, we're oh, just she froze. Kim. Kim froze and lost. Kim, that <laughs> upset Kim. <laughs> That's cool, man. And so with so you're obviously the Vieira family is a bit like the Gracie family, man. You're trying to build an army of jujitsu arrows. And uh, I was, I was, I was always joking before the guy say, "Oh, you have how many kids? I have five. See, if I have a student, I make it. <laughs> 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 if I don't have the members, I'll make it. <laughs> You've got your own. You'll have to start charging your kids. It's like where's your, your very membership, soon, membership this month? <laughs> very soon because they give me hard work. Ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know the feeling, brother. I know the feeling. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sorry, I dropped out of it there, having some uh, connection issues, but I'm back now. Yeah, was good. Um, so, Carlos, did, I don't know if I missed it. How? What brought you to Australia? When did you come to Australia? I came to Australia was in 2008. Uh, the purpose I came to Australia was for my miss. She was already here before. Uh, we met around the world, uh, travel. Uh, she was in a, a trip for Portugal. Then she went to Spain as we stick together that was in Spain and that was the goals. She actually she come to she come to Australia to go to move to Spain. She started on some course for English to teach her there, but I was I was not feeling I'm gonna live there forever in Spain. That was my last spot because it was an island. I was living in Canaras Island. I felt a little bit limited for myself. I have a good group there, it was a good class and the gym was amazing. But I was always thinking about a little bit more than that. I was left my brother there back in the day, and then my mom and dad moved to Spain as well to be to everyone together. I was not the one I think I was want to be the rest of my life. And then she was here, and I was heard so just a lot of good things for here in Australia. Uh, part the, the distance for the rest of the world. Everyone knows how hard for the travel for here to back to Brazil mm -hmm. or to go to other countries. But it's not impossible. It's 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 a reasonable finance to do it, whatever you wanted to do here. That's the good thing. But the, this is not a big deal. But and then I say to her, I think better than us last the time to come to to Spain and start everything, and it not work well. I think it would be better we actually start everything in Australia. If it not work well in Australia, then we go somewhere else. But then are we here? Five yeah. kids yeah. and the business and her. She have her family here. All the support for her family, that's, that's great as well. She have a mom and dad, her brother, cousins, uncle. And it's great. Been great. Been mm. great. Yeah. Do you think and for you... and for the all the experiences I have back in the day, I I I went in a lot of different places around the world before I sent in there in Australia. I was when I was in Brazil, I was in the capital in Brasilia. That was my last place I was teaching in Brazil. And then I received some opportunity to teach in Iceland. 
But because I have the passport from Portugal, I was I was felt it was a good opportunity for my first first spot to leave from Brazil. That was my good opportunity to leave, and I went to the Pan America Championship, and 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 the guys have some offer for me to live in Iceland and give the support I was I was needed to be there. And it was like, a, let's go try. And then I just asked for a couple of months to finish my job in Brazil. I was actually working a big gym in Brazil back then. And I went to Iceland and spent like nine months in Iceland. I have a great opportunity, a great experience in Iceland. Uh, everyone knows the big names these days for Gana Nelson, for the UC. Wow. He actually was my student there. He was one of my purple huh. belt. I used to <laughs> private class him every single day. I was actually sick with the with training with him because he was like a Sunday when I have a little rest and he's give me a message, say, Carlos, we train today? Say, nah, we not train today. I want some rest. <laughs> he was like very like a full on one of training. And then as soon as I left from Iceland, he, he moved to New York. Wow. Uh, in New York, with hands on grace, with two weeks, he got his brown belt. He competed the Pan America Championship, and he got cha- he won at Pan America as a brown belt. Mm-hmm. After Saturday, two months, we actually trained like a, every single day for seven months. And then after Iceland, I left from uh, Portugal for competing in the European. Then I live in a uh, uh, in uh, in Spain. Uh, in Spain, I gave me a good opportunity to travel a bit around the Europe. I went to Iceland for a couple of times back for seminar. Then I went to London a few times for seminar. Back again to Portugal to competing. It was a great experience. And I'll be honest with you, and I still, for the, the experience of back in the day to go in America, I still don't have any place of being best place to be here in Australia. Not because I'm here with you, not to be because I know the people from Australia is going to hear that, but the truth from the bottom of my heart, I never see one place better from here. From wow. the weather, the people, the friendly, the relation with the friends here. It's amazing. I actually found myself here. Wow. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That's an interesting yeah. question. Because I was born here, raised here. I've I've left here, obviously, but I've never really lived elsewhere. Like yeah. the feeling like when you are like obviously you must love Brazil. It's your home country, right? You love Brazil. <laughs> But you must, like, what is the feeling like when you're like, well, you know, I can't get enough out of what I want in my life from here. I have to go elsewhere else. Is that a, is that a, is that a scary feeling or is that an exciting? It's a frustration feeling because it, it is Brazil, one of the best countries in the world, if you don't have the political stuff from behind the scenes. Right. Because it is, it is the weather, the fruits, the food. Mm-hmm. It is one of the best countries can, could, could be. But it's not at the moment, and it's just getting harder and harder. And I can see more people that go live from Brazil for everywhere around the world. Yeah. And I've been seeing a lot of my friends and family that go to Portugal. It's not ever far. It's not ever have a big difference of a culture because actually Portugal is Brazil is a colony of uh, Portugal. As the yeah. culture is very similar. And but I still want to live from there for a better for a better quality of life. It's it's mm-hmm. sad to see that to hear that. And and I cannot actually say anything like then better than just say I'm 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 actually found the best place to be and yeah. to stay and to raise my kids and and my career to be end here not end but I'll do whatever I can you know what I mean it's here in Australia yeah. because yeah, that's I, one of the best place so far. Brilliant. But it, it I've just realized is that why your nickname is Portuguese? I never realized that. That's yeah, well, why basically. You, but you know, you know, probably from Thiago's all hell, the Brazilians that love to give a nickname for everybody. <laughs> it, it's funny because I, I try my best, especially these days, because I don't want anyone to get offended. And I always say, look, that's the Brazilian thing. And it's not for offend the person, just try to make it easy and then a little bit like fun. And people take it. It's not a big deal, you know what I mean? And I, I have most of my students with nicknames. And... And because my actually my mom is from Brazil, but my dad's from Portugal, right. and a Brazilian Portuguese have a lot of things like a, a, a funny talk, like a jokes of Portuguese. Are you a dumb? You this? You do all wrong? And then every time I do something wrong, the guys ah you I know you are some have like a a little a little a little part of your family from Portugal. It's always joke with that. <laughs> and I will what can I do? I'm gonna take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for, for since I was like probably like a 16, 17 years old that, that nickname 
Mm. Some mm. people probably never know my name. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the way in Australia. Nah, well, we, we, love, we love a nickname in Australia, <laughs> that's for sure. We just add, we, we shorten the name and then add O. Oh, we yeah. Yeah. Oh. Or I, yeah. But no, I think everyone yeah. in Australia knows your name. Or, well, most people in Tennessee <laughs> should know your name. You, you've uh, you've very much been, like I said, an OG. Um, just for anybody that might not know, you're, you're probably quite humble, Carlos, but just pulling up uh, on BJJ Heroes here, your main achievements in, in Jiu-Jitsu you were the European champion in 2004-2009, Brazilian champion in 2005, Pan American champion 2002-2003, um, Pan Pax 2010, Pan American silver medalist 2004, European bronze medalist 2006. Wow. So for anybody that might not know, Carlos is uh, not just as a coach, but as a competitor, very, very accomplished. Mm. Yeah, I, was, I, was have, I had a lot of fun when I was competing. Mm, it was yeah. great. It was a great experience. I invest everything I could. Uh, it's 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 funny because I have some students. I have some of my students. They not see. They see what they look now, but they not realize how it was mm. and where they come from, where they started, what the sacrifice you did for everything you 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 had. It was very hard, but like I say to to my wife and uh, to my my students as well my family when we have the hard times of the covid we get the time like everyone's get a very anxiety and a very stressful and i and i say to myself one day i was at home and I say look I, i'm actually keen if it, something's going wrong i will start from the scratch again and probably going to be easy the way i started back in the day mm. and that's why i keep myself very positive mm. and everything passed you know what i mean everything went well and we back on the feet and that's it yeah. we, we're still on. That's good. Yeah, that's but right. That's what right. was your motivation to compete so much, man? What What was it? What were you? And I don't mean the, like I mean, what were you trying to prove? Something for yourself, something for others, or just the, the power of jujitsu? What motivated you to compete so much? Well, like I said before, we for the reason I was for the small city, for only thirty seven thousand people city, I was looking to have a, something, a, a different life or a better life or, or, or discover something in, around the world. And I felt the Jiu-Jitsu was my, my, my big keys, my big tools for my big opportunity to mm -hmm. live from there and discover everything I was want to. And because like a, like a, because it was a small town, you don't have like a lot of opportunities or, much other kind of sports or actually not never hook up in other sports because I started very young. I did at the school because I had to. I never hook up as a training separate than the jiu-jitsu. My whole life was full long training of jiu-jitsu since I was 13 to 14. And I just got it as a good opportunity for my life. Mm. And it was a, that was the best opportunity. And then back and forth with like a hug with my parents, not with my mom, because you know mom is a mom. They're gonna be always mom. Uh, but my dad was like back in the day, he was like, this is a bad boy sport. Don't do this. You're not going to bring nothing for you. Just let it go. This is not for you. Just go start this and that. Like the same mm -hmm. story for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I was never give up for my goals. And and the end of the story was uh, was happy and sad story because the jiu-jitsu actually gave my dad the last few uh, years of life a better quality. Because my father they, they diagnosed with cancer a few years ago, and he passed away seven years ago. But he found it was a big battle for three years, and man, the jujitsu is still like a help himself for very long and give support. I'm yeah. not sure if you guys remember. I put it on a Facebook some like a seminar here in Australia for raise money for help with the trading of my parents for my dad, and uh, Chuck Stefano we went there, and uh, some of the students for another club they went there, some coaches mm -hmm. for the other clubs went there rise good money i went to brazil and i put like a big names of clubs of jiu-jitsu to raise money and help my training of my dad it was great oh, and man. it's the last few days he probably realized how good it was because i built myself here in australia i built my family i, I can give a quarter of life for my family here and it's all with jiu-jitsu and something i never actually uh give up you know what I mean? And, yeah. I, and I see a lot of people that actually on the track, they give up, They're like a big names. And it's, it can, I don't want to ever see, like say names, but they actually drop off on the track. Like yeah. big friends of mine or someone like a 
big name of jiu-jitsu as well and drop off. Yeah. yeah. Of course, it's not just because it's not believe or, or give up, but other things come across of the life as well, of course. Yeah. But I never did that. I never actually give up for this. And I was take for everything I could. And I did it. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. That was great. So you, you've been in this race since 2008. How have you found the change in the scene since then? So the last sort of, what's that? For 13 years, no, 15 years, 15 years you've 15 been here. Nearly 15 years now. It, it, it's just like amazing to see uh, uh, how great the scenario of jiu-jitsu at the moment here with the big names that are being built in here in Australia, the big names that are being living from here to go around the world to training and the people that are giving them biggest respect of the level of the people from here. It's amazing. And like you said, when I arrived here in Australia, I was I used to competing. First, it was like not many black belts on a championship, then the national or the Pampex. I was probably myself, and it's a few names you can actually, in numbers, and you can count on a finger. And the competition here was around like a 300 to 200 to 250 to 300 competitors. And to see the last competition hit like 1,600, 1,800 competitors, mm -hmm. It's just amazing. I actually something I always mention my students about that because I actually I, I wanted the people understand how much the sports grow here in Australia. It's amazing. It's amazing to see that, and not just in numbers but in level as well. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's what, do you, what do you see as next for jujitsu, like in its current evolution? What can you see in the future? I can see a lot of transition of the gi to no gi as well. We, 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 everyone notes that. Uh, for myself, I still see, I still looking at, as a different sport, mm -hmm. but the transition is there. Mm -hmm. uh, could be have a big transition in the future. Uh, for myself, I try myself to actually relate a lot at the moment with the judo, cross with jiu -jitsu and judo. Mm -hmm. We're doing really well with that. I have a lucky one of the coach in the Maribyrnong as a coach, uh, now a specific coach for judo. And we actually definitely this year, we actually, we finally this year registered the Sia Paulista as a judo club official in Victoria. And this has been great to have him. I'm a brown belt in judo as well. And and, and it's amazing. I, I always love that cross thing with jiu-jitsu and judo. And I believe that cross things for all the, all the martial arts is going to be very important for the future as well. And not just for us, but for the judo as well, because I see a lot of transition for the judo for MMA because maybe just by itself is going to be hard track for them. Mm. And for us, that's going to be the same. If we have that big transition with no gi, we're going to have to, to change, you know, not the change, but the feeling, get a the little bit the direction, the turn the direction as well for that, that way, for sure. Mm. I was yeah. used back in the day not do much no gi, and I was having more class, and people doing more no gi. It's going to be natural transition mm. yeah. for that. Yeah. I reckon. And Carlos, can you tell us about when you got your black belt? Just reading here on BJJ Heroes, it's got a little bit of a story about it. Just yeah, can you you share that with us? Yeah, I got on my black belt in 2001. It was around September, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said, it was all my belts was very hard transition because we don't have like a higher levels. I spent like a around nearly four and a half, four years in a blue belt. And I get some mistake going the competition. The guys get got, got sick, got sick with me. I was arriving the, on the competition. The guy, oh my god, he's still blue belt. <laughs> and I was thinking about where I'm gonna go, <laughs> where I'm gonna go if I change for purple belt. Just sit in the back like this and keep watching. It was not a choice because it was not many competitors. And and I got that some always got sick to see me as a blue belt. And I, I have all my belts hanging in the gym and. People say, well, you don't have a blue belt. It's, you, you you step the white belt to purple. No, that was, was my blue Two belt. Two white belts. It was all it turned white. Fading, fading the color. You can see just the little tip was a blue. Yeah. It, it was football, <laughs> but back in then, it was, that's how it was working. And and September, around September 2001, I got on my black belt. And um, I come for like I saw a big injury uh, for my knees. Well, uh, I was pay my flights and uh, accommodation. I organized everything to go to the Pan American Championship the year after in 2002. And it was like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it because I have the big injury in the knee. It was a meniscal injury. injury. And I was like uh, thinking something to recover. And I did the course on short. 
And it was after three days, I was one day was go up to the stage. It was like, oh, I forgot about the injury. It was like a feeling good. And I went forward. I went keep training hard. I forgot about the injury. And I went to the Pan America. It was my first competition as a black belt. And I win. It was great. It, it wow. was a lot of big names on the at the division. Uh, I fought in the same final with Edson Diniz. He actually was the 2001 black belt lightweight champion. He was the number one, was the European, it was the big name at the division. I won by submission. And the final, I got Daniel uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Moraes. Uh, he's like a six or seven times world champion. Uh, one of the big names as well, and I beat him in the final by points. And it was a great experience because uh, it was not just like for me as my first tournament as a black belt, but it was a big title as a black belt as well. The Pan America back then was a big title, yeah. And and uh, most of the people back then in 2000, 2000, 2006, they only have the opportunity to travel to America if you have a big big sponsorship as a, a good name or if you was rich. And one or the other, and most of the people, when he's rich, he's not going to throw himself in the black belt division <laughs> because they know it's going to be like waste that time. And means and most of the people, I was a big name. And it was amazing experience to be there with the big names and raise my arms and go in the podium in the big the first place and my first yeah. as a black belt. It was amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Uh, congratulations on that. That's an amazing yeah, story. Yes. what a story for your kids, you know, to grow up around and that, that's so cool. And what about like that yeah. quarter zone? So that quarter zone shot in your knee really kind of shifted. Like otherwise, you would have you would have not. Yeah, well, you would have really struggled, I, I, right? I, I was struggling because uh, most of the people that have uh, the injury of the meniscus before, they know how it works. The knee actually have a locket, and you know, have a stretch, you know, have a bend the leg, they get locked at some level, some angle, and I couldn't actually move my leg. Wow. And you, and thinking about this happened in the middle of the fight, I couldn't actually do anything. Oof. And after the, the quad zone, because the card of the inflammation, I probably have the problem but I was still not in pain anymore. And the inflammation went down, and it was like, a, let's do it. But end of the story, you see how the athlete life is pretty hard because I did that, and I keep pushing that stuff for very long. In 2007, I ended in two injuries, I like a two surgeries in each legs because it starts to compensate the body to the other side. Everything you transit to the other side, and I got injured, the same injury in the meniscus and the other knee. Wow. And the first wow. year I actually did the surgery afterwards. You know what I mean? That's why they actually the, the, the athlete's life is pretty hard. And the people don't understand the sacrifice we actually have to do for all the competitions and to be a, 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 a like a, a big name. It's, it was pretty hard. Mm. Everyone knows that. You know what I mean? It was not easy for nobody, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. With, and what do you think, Carlos, about like the sort of new school jiu-jitsu? Like you talked a little bit about it, uh, no, you know, no gi being almost like a two separate things to jiu-jitsu to gi. What do you think about like some of the the new new school positions and things like that? Or do you think jiu-jitsu is going to head back the old school way, more more like traditional jiu-jitsu? No, I, I think it's going to be a bit separate things for sure because oh it, it, it depends on myself that I'm going to try to keep it max as I can with the traditional because I really have the tradition like people bow the mat the respect with the higher levels I really like to do this because like I said for build up the kids I think that's the best way mm. and and the no gi it's it's you don't have like the what color belt what higher level what's the lower level and the injuries, it's more exposed there as well. I always like to to joke with my student. I felt the gi like like an accident with a car. You have some protection, <laughs> and the no yeah, gi is like a motorcycle accident. Not much protection <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you know what I mean. That's how I feel. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's that's gonna be the 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 the, the revolution gonna happen for sure. Mm -hmm. it's going to be more opportunity for a lot of people. They're going to open the more schools and uh, and people are going to have to catch up. Like I said, I, I'm going to try my best to keep uh, my, my feet on the track. And uh, if I need to bring some people to help me up, I will. And if I need to go to Brazil to update myself, I will. And it's, it's there. We need to, we need to accept that. 
because I, I heard that back in the day. I, I heard back in the day for my teacher for MMA. He said the MMA was going to take over. If you don't actually uh, be part of that, you're going to be behind. And I heard this uh, years ago. And, and you can see the transition. You know what I mean? You, you had to fall up. You have to. If you want to keep on a, on a scenario, you're going to have to. It sounds like you're gaining it, adding around the knee area in order to protect your knees. But uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, a, think, I think you're right. With airbags underneath. Yeah, that's right. The the culture of the club, though, I, I think you nailed it, right? Like everybody's going to want a different kind of gym. Some people want loose, no rules, you know, other people want traditional yeah. structure. Like that's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu is it actually offers a wide range, whereas something like taekwondo doesn't really. It's all, all the clubs do taekwondo pretty much the same way. You know, there's a lot of structure there. Jiu-Jitsu offers this kind of broad spectrum, and I, I, I love that about our, our martial art. You know, I think that there's something for everybody. Yeah. That's a very special art. Yeah. Look, it's in, in my vision, I can see it's a, it's a, these days, a lot of the young people, when they go work, uh, they get work, and if you get lost the job, they don't have a care because they know tomorrow going to find another job. And these could be solution when we have the, the, the traditional BJJ because when I teach my teacher, my students, my kids, that's the way because they need to understand the higher level, the respect, the discipline. It's not about to control anybody. It's mm -hmm. about the respect. And we these days, we've been lost this a lot. I agree. And that's why I try to build my kids and the school to one day when they get to work, they value that. They understand they have the job. They have the boss. They have people higher level him understand that, not try to go pass over. That's the idea of the traditional thing to give to the kids, their vision. You know what I mean? That's why I want the, the keep with that. I'm going to mm -hmm. follow the ways. I'm going to have to update our will, but I want to try to keep this because I, I, I grew up with that. I, I raised my jiu-jitsu with that, and I learned it like this way. And that was bring me like a way I am. And I'm going to try to keep that for sure. Amazing. Fantastic. But we're, yeah, we're nearly out of time, uh, Carlos. Do you have any final words for our listeners? You're, you've given yeah. a lot of... And you have one minute. You have one minute yeah. before the clock runs out. <laughs> one minute. Yeah, well, I basically want to just quick story. Uh, when I he, when I arrived in Australia, I was having an opportunity because Gustavo Fossiroy was living in Perth. Uh, he, sort of, he sorted out something for me to send my uh, curriculum from the gym it was back in the day it was an extreme uh with John Donohue. Uh it was a bigger a little understood when it happened when I left from there. Uh, I was trying to offer him the idea to change as a Sea Police, but he's really have his own name. Uh I was younger and I couldn't have a time because I got a, off another job uh at uh far away from his gym. I don't want to miss the opportunity to leave from the gym uh or lost the other opportunity for the other gym. And he's ready in a he's ready in a transition to waiting for someone to come to Australia. It was actually with Thiago and another teacher. And I was just wanna I was I was worried, worried about to loss that was right. good. Got it. And Carlos, just tell us about your first uh, experience in Australia when you first came. Like how what happened? <laughs> like I said, uh, I have the opportunity to come here because my wife she was living here before. Uh, Michelle's been here for over thirty three years. She born in Brazil but raised here in Australia. Um, I know Gustavo Fossiroli for many, many years. Actually, it was a funny story because Gustavo, I was I was brown belt and I was teaching and live in a city. It was very like a university uh, for the university uh, little town for engineer and a lot of people that go there for study for the engineer. Uh, Gustavo Fossiroli was like not far from there, from the city. Uh, he have a good friend of he, of himself, uh, Arlindo. Uh, back in the day, Arlindo was a white belt, and uh, Gustavo Falsirola was a yellow belt juvenile. Mm. And I was a brown belt. That was crazy. And then he came to train with me there. That was the first, like, one of the first contact we actually spent time together. He spent like a couple of weeks there with me. Uh, we never lost the contact together, uh, the relations, friend relation. We actually ended the fight together as a black belt on the end of the track. Uh, Gustavo was always been good friend. He's actually when it was I have my first babe, uh, my first uh, son. 
uh, my wife was pregnant. He was in uh, my parents, uh, Michelle's parents' house. And we told the new about my wife was pregnant. And he was very emotional as well to see that story, to see myself. It was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I came to Australia, Gustavo was already in Perth, living in Perth. Uh, then I was asking him, you know anyone in uh, Victoria that was having gym or connection, probably teaching? And he said, oh, I know someone because he actually was teaching back in the day in Perth. One gym, it was related with the extreme, with under John Donahue. And then I sent the, the curriculum for Gustavo. Gustavo uh, sent to John Donahue. And he said, like, uh, probably it's going to be a good opportunity. And I went there and spent like a, a nearly a year or a bit close to a year and uh, teaching the extreme. It was a great experience, uh, and great to see the numbers of the the numbers of the the compare the trainings and competitors he really had back then, and uh, good opportunity as well to say uh, when I have the second opportunity to teach, it was not close to there. It was a, a extreme. It was in a, a Chester, mm -hmm. and uh, John have a, like a different goals to his club to bring all the black belts because I actually offered him to be a Seapolista, but he was ready with a Novo Neon back then. Uh, it was no work well, the, the unit, unit together, but we never have a problem before. Uh, he have his goals, I get my goals. The only thing was shame because I was probably young and I was building my family. I was need the opportunity to teaching. And uh, back in the day, the, the gym in a, in a uh, Noble Park, they offered me a job. Um, I was not going to lose the opportunity because I'm not sure how long he's going to keep hold of the opportunity. And then uh, John asked me as well to spend there for a little like a, a month or two months uh, to waiting for some black belts coming from Brazil. But in my head, I was like thinking, man, if someone's coming in a couple of weeks and I lose the other opportunity, I'm not going to have any job. Mm. And I was just decided to say, John, I'll just uh, appreciate for everything. And then I took the job from the Noble Park. I never have any problem with uh, any students. I never actually send an email for nobody. I don't actually have a goal for no one follow myself. I want to actually start from the scratch. It was probably the best way. And I probably something uh, uh, understood back in the day because, you know, not just from me, myself, story or from John Donahue's story, but for the students, like, oh, he did this, he did that. I actually heard someone say, man, he helped him to come here. He's paid his flight. Now nah, I came by myself. My wife really uh, I was here before. I have all the support for her family. I pay all my bills. And you know what I mean? It was people just <clears throat> build a big story from behind that. The only thing I want to say, I would like to say thanks for John Hill for the opportunity when I was there. I never have any problem. I actually, when I was there, I have a great experience to meet uh, Chris Brown as well, one of the biggest names for the wrestling here in Australia. Uh, and I have a, a, a lot of experience to train wrestling with him as well. And I see him actually open his uh, his own place as a uh, MMA as well. And I think it's the natural a uh, natural transition for everyone to have your own space, your own direction. But I just want to clarify: I never had any issue with anybody. You know what I mean? I'll just mm -hmm. I'm here in peace, and I do my job. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm grateful the opportunity to give to me at the start. Uh, but we have our team in now, and looking forward for the last goal as well. Awesome. And that's why we started here in the first place and the first opportunity we had be here in Australia. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. That's, it's, that's really, a, it was great. it's really important to kind of keep like your reputation intact as you move through. A hundred percent. More community. hundred percent. So, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. This is actually one of the more, the more, the, the important things I actually care with me. That's the reputation. Absolutely. My, yeah. my teachers used to say they can try to take it, but not going to take for you at all. Mm. It's yours. And I need to, Take care, you know what I mean? It's it's important to take care. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a really good point to wrap up on. Thank you yeah. so much, Carlos Vieira, for uh, thank joining you guys us. for the opportunity. Man, it's, thank um, you. It's great. Now, normally at this point, I ask our guests if they can, when the episode comes out, share it on their social media. But Carlos doesn't really believe in social media, so I might ask maybe one of your other students that um, because you've been. <laughs> no, my uh, wife, my wife believe it. I said to you before, it's not. <laughs> It's not about not believing, about my time. I just like receive so much messages. I get like, uh, get lost yeah. in their stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I, I used to say, I used to say, I'm the body, my wife, the brain. She's <laughs> the part of the social media and the yeah. work from behind the scenes. I'm the hard work and she's the brain. Yeah, I love that, it, man. I love I it. I like that. That makes awesome. sense. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we'll have this out and I'm sure it's going to be, as I said, a lot of people have been asking for you. So thank you so much for giving up your time. I appreciate it. And... Thanks so much. And uh, sorry for taking too long. And no, we'll yeah, find, right. find the time. And, uh, it was yeah, great to have you have the time yeah. with you guys. It's awesome. It sure is. All right. We uh, look forward to seeing you on the mats uh, competition and uh, for mats sure. live. Thanks, for sure. For sure. 100%. All right. It was lovely. Thank you guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.